Hey everybody and welcome to Board Game Heaven. This episode I'm going to do an unboxing of Arena The Contest by Dragori Games. And as you can see, this is a pretty big box. So let's not wait any longer and quickly open it up. Arena The Contest, the base game, which is a rather heavy box. It's a big box, it's a heavy box. It's got really cool artwork on the front also on the sides and on the back you can see the game with its components all the cards and miniatures they're presented here the list of the components and a little blurb about the world of arena the contest so yeah everything is on here it's one to eight players 14 and up in 45 to 90 minutes all right let's open up the box. Okay, so here is a card that explains that this game is a living thing. <laughs> so there might be some uh, rules, changes and facts on the website. All right, that is good to know. We have a quick start a booklet here, which is just a folded booklet, not too many rules there. So that is quite handy actually to have a quick start booklet like that. There is a quest guide, which is nice and big. So I'll just briefly go through here so you can see different setups of different quests that you can play. That's pretty cool. Lots of scenarios. So that's about 40 pages of scenarios, quest guide. All right, the campaign tome, which is also pretty cool. It's uh, also a campaign based game. So it has a map of the world of Tanaris. It has an index about this book and notorious historical context. Introduction, really cool artwork on all the pages. I mean, look at that. You know, and there are puzzles in the, uh, that's pretty cool. Look at all those QR codes. I'm just gonna flip through that really quickly. Don't wanna spoil too much. So there's a whole campaign to play with all these uh, cool dragons and the monsters that you'll be facing. Great artwork and a campaign log. That's pretty cool. You can make a copy of that, fill it in. So that's nice. So quite a big uh, book for campaigns and quests. And then thirdly, we have the rule book, which is almost as thick. So there's an index and a component list in here as well, which is handy. Introduction, general rules in competitive mode, because this game has plenty of modes. You can play this competitively, cooperatively, you know, single quests, the whole campaign, pretty awesome. Quite excited to finally receive this. <laughs> so here are all the rules. I'll just go through those a bit quicker because there is plenty of stuff in this box that I'd like to show you. So yeah, set up. Okay, it's also a 40 page book. Right, so here is the board. Let me just put this to the side for now so I can show you the board. It's a bit pretty thick because it folds in six. So I'll start here and then here and then here. Right, so there we go. So this is the entire board with your uh, health track basically so you know we start there's a 70 here which is the highest number goes all the way back to zero and this is already a pre-made map that you can use for plenty of games but the back of this board also has a basically an empty side which is just you know stone cobblestone which looks really nice very very detailed artwork i love the look of this and you can put your, you know, your tokens on these, so you have these tiles. 
And so this is the first punch board that was in the box. So you have several tiles you know, with lava, with stone, with stairs, doors, levers, you name it. Double-sided, you know, these are traps. Uh, this looks like spores or something. And you can put them on this you know, blank map and build your own dungeon according to uh, the quest guide or the campaign tome. Or maybe you're making up your own uh, arenas. So these are wall tokens. So this is the second punch board. So you have these and smaller in the three, four and five uh, squares. And they are double sided on the back. There's walls of bone, skulls. You can see that good. I'll, I'll zoom in a bit. So that's pretty awesome. So that's the second punch board. The third punch board has some more of these uh, two by two lava and rubble tiles. There are these portals as well. It's pretty cool. Some smaller walls of two uh, squares, some doors in different colors and some runes there as well. And on the back, again, the spike traps and these and the bone walls. So that's pretty cool as well. That is the third punch board. Then we have another punch board with all these tokens. So we have all these tokens for, you know, several characters here and prisoners. You have your special ability tokens, some more uh, tiles there with the lava and on the back side. I'm presuming that will be spike traps again. Yes. So and on the back, they're double sided. You have these again. You have these tokens that go beyond 70. If you go beyond 70 on the board, you can take one of those plus 70. So yeah, nice round tokens. So now I'm going to show you the insert of this box, which is really awesome. So they have this game trays insert that has a spot for everything. So after punching all those boards, you can store all these tokens, all these walls inside this box, which I will show you after unboxing this. I'll do a reboxing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's start with the top tray. So this has a really cool looking uh, lid with the dragon on it. If you can see that, it's pretty nice. Really, really nicely done. So inside, I'll just tilt this. Uh, we have these character uh, boards. So these are cards. Let me open that up for you. So there we go. All right, so there are, these are thinner, well, card stock, basically. So they are uh, sturdy enough, but they're not cardboard. They're not the thick type, but they're good enough. I mean, this is like uh, postcard quality. And uh, so you have different characters, Katar the Barbarian, and on the back there's just the artwork of that character, it's pretty cool. So, and they're all different, so you have this Barbarian, so Cedric the Werewolf, we've got Garion the Rogue, we have Rokaru the Samurai, Jurana the Amazon, Rurik the Warrior, Taram the Cleric, Talia the Druid, who does have additional uh, alternate alt artwork, uh, Niari the Hunter, uh, Avalum the Wizard, Katharina the Witch, Zafara the Fallen Angel, nice. Then we have some dragons here, so there we go. <laughs> we have Azimor the Red Dragon. I'm going to show you the back of that as well. Really cool looking. We have Thyra, the blue dragon. Maybe it's Tira. Cool, cool, cool. Zarumag, the black dragon. Nice. Sweet artwork. Keylorth, the white dragon. And Vradok, or is it Uradok? No, it's Vradok, the undead dragon. There we go with that. Look at that. Awesome artwork. Then we have Baelroth, the Diabolo. 
So, uh, you know, the large demon. There we go with his artwork. Cool. Another dragon, uh, Tom Morand, the gold dragon. Nice. And I love all this artwork. It's really well done. The dragon avatar. There he is. All right, so plenty of those. Then we have uh, two leaflets with conditions on one side, and we've got uh, tiles and heroes turn on the other side as a reference. So that's pretty handy as well. You know, while the tiles are pretty easy to uh, remember what they do, so you can put this on the table and this on the table because this is the same. So you can put these on the table as a reference, which is really much appreciated. Okay, so those are those cards there. So in this first tray, we have spots for all of these heroes. Spots for the cards. So there's cards here and there's cards there. And if you sleeve them, you're going to need more room. So I'm assuming that these two spots will be filled with those same cards when sleeved. We have these uh, clips that go on the bases in several colors as well. So let's take a look at those minis. So here's the first one. Angel. And, you know, they're nicely posed. At least this one is looking like she's casting a spell or something. Wings raised up. Detail on these is okay. It's, you know, not the they this one at least doesn't have a whole lot of detail there is some on the uh, skirt and in the wings of course as you can see the face is pretty clear then the second one over here this uh, coster already a little bit more detail because of you know this the stuff on the staff that you can see the uh, the body armor and things she has on her belt are a little bit more detailed. Okay, they feel like a very light type of plastic, um, so better be careful with these, they're not bendy. Uh, so this one has a cape or a robe I should say and there is some detail on that as you can see in the light here and he's got the sun on the back all right then we have another character here okay so there is a snake at her feet uh, that's raised up here and, well, the scales there, you, you can tell that this figure has some scales. The snake and the woman has robes or, a, you know, a dress. So, yeah, the, the detail on these is basic. So, uh, but, you know, you, you can make out all the detail that you need to. I mean, the musculature on this barbarian is pretty clear. You can see that he has these wrapped cloth boots with some fur. And a very dynamic pose, which I like. Let's focus here. Yes. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, really liking his pose. Okay, then we have another uh, of this, I'll call it the warrior class, the red ones, this werewolf. So, yeah, you can tell the details of his muscles and of his fur. Okay, so that's this one. And then... We have this mage over here. 
and he's holding his scepter. The color is kind of making my camera lose focus uh, sometimes. But you can tell the detail on his robes over there and his staff. Let's see if I can get that into focus as well. Well, I think you get the idea. All right, so here we have this archer. Really cool. Also in a very dynamic pose, pulling back the string on the bow. And, uh, yep, she's got a quiver on her hip. And there is some uh, scaliness uh, on her leggings. So, you know, it's like it's netted. Cool. Lovely figure. Here's a, uh, you know, a warrior in a kind of like a samurai outfit with a sword, a katana. And yeah, so, so there's some detail in his armor as well, as you can tell. Okay. So the detail on these minis is, like I said, all right. It's just not very deep. It's rather shallow. So that means when painting, make sure to thin your paints, which is a, generally a good idea, but especially with, you know, um, details that isn't too deep. Uh, make sure you thin your paints so that you won't lose all that detail. If your paints are too thick, they will cover up uh, a lot of that. So here we have another swordsman. And he's got, uh, like, I think that's a, a dagger or maybe a, a small handgun on his belt. And there, there's a dagger over there as well. And he's like, on guard. So two more here before I move on to the next tree. So this is a female coster in a light gray plastic. And this one actually has more detail than the others. Maybe it's the coloring. In the plastic, I've heard people say that adding colors to plastic does sometimes influence the quality. And I have to say that this is a lot better. There is a lot of subtle detail in her armor that I did not really notice with the others. Her face is also a lot clearer. So yeah, that is something. I hope I can zoom in on that. doesn't really... But I hope this is clear enough for you to see that this model is actually really nicely detailed in the hair and everything. Yeah, that's actually a huge difference, surprisingly. So finally we have this one, also in a gray plastic, this dwarf, there we go, who has a big shield also with some nice detail on it. And he's, uh, he's wearing a heavy armor and his, you know, skirt, whatever it is, does have a lot of detail on it as well. His axe has some detail there as well. Let me see, come on, focus. So, there is some engraving on the axe. There you go. I think you can see that. So this is a quite a cool figure. All right. So those are all the hero characters in this tray. So let me carefully take that out. And then there is a second tray. Also, again, with a really cool lid. Well, it's the same uh, imprinting. I'll put that there. I'll turn it back again. 
And this has your, you know, your monster, your enemy figures in here. They're all gray. So, uh, and, and more cards. So we got some cards here and there's plenty of slots again. So, uh, there we go. Yep, all four cards. And there are some slots for tokens too. All right, let's take a look at these minis then. So we have this evil dude with his large mace. And again, in a great plastic, so there is more detail. And he has deeper detail as well, as you can tell from this uh, piece of armor there. And the mace head. So, uh, yeah, and the shin guards and everything. So that's pretty nice. We have that one. Then we have these guys with a uh, crossbow. So also more detail on the uh, shoulders and on the armor. The crossbow itself looks nice. Yep, he's got two small quivers with bolts on his back. And he's got a hood over his head like an executor. All right, so there's two of these and you'll notice that these slots are all the same except for this one because you can put them basically anywhere they're they're engineered to hold all of these so this is another of those archers crossbow men so here we have an enemy with two blades and he's got a uh, piece of cloth over his face i hope i can zoom in a bit closer no won't let me i have to keep some distance from the camera but I hope that's clear enough. So yeah, not too shabby. <laughs> that's pretty nice. So we have a uh, three, four of those. There's another one here. And then finally you have three of these uh, with a hammer. This one's missing an arm. <laughs> well, I hope I can find that in here somewhere. Otherwise I'll have to ask for a replacement arm. So, as you can see there, missing an arm. I'll take another one so you can have a better look at that. So, yeah. Alright, so here he is with arm. So, he's got a huge hammer. Kind of looks like a construct. You know, it could be a large dude in a heavy armor with a helmet on. But you can't see any, you know, body pieces of skin or anything. Well, maybe that's his elbow. But that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. And this one is also the same guy. So, all right. So we have those. And I'll take this out. All right. And then finally, in the bottom, there's more slots for cards because this uh, tray did have only five spots for four uh, packs of cards, which after sleeving would, will take a lot more space. So we have some space available in the bottom of the box. There's two dedicated spaces for the D20s. There's a white one and a black one over there. And then we have some of those tokens and these spots are all reserved for your tiles, which I will show you in a bit. So we have three of these cool uh, sculpted chests. There's a skull on the lid. There's chains across it. So that's really nice. And this is also very detailed. I can tell the wood grain in the, in the, you know, in the chest, in the wood. So it does really matter what color the plastic is in, strangely enough. I had not expected that, but apparently it is, in fact, the truth. So here's a yellow prisoner. He's chained to the floor with his wrists. So we have several of those. We have them in different colors. And we have two of these. Uh, orbs with a snake capture the orb 
So it's like capture the flag mode, but with these. So we have two of those, one for each camp, for each team. So that's pretty cool as well. And of course, finally, the huge dragon. So this model is basically the dragon for all of those uh, dragons that you saw uh, the, the, the tiles for, the, uh, the dashboards. Um, but I believe Dragori games are working on a dragon pack, so you can have different sculpts that actually resemble the, uh, the art. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, this one is cast in gray as well, so he does have a whole lot of detail. You can see all the scales on his arms there. A really cool looking scaly dragon. His scales on his chest. And his teeth and his big head. That's pretty nice. And his neck. And all the veins on the, uh, on the wings. I even see some bone there. And his tail. So yeah. Big dragon. Just to show you a little bit of a reference for size. This is a, one of the minions. So grab. Snack for on the way. <laughs> okay, so he has a dedicated spot in here as well. There you go. So I'll, uh, I'll open the cards, I'll sleeve them, and then I'll put everything where it belongs in a bit. Okay, so I've sleeved everything right now, and I'll show you where everything goes. So starting with the bottom tray, the dragon, of course, stays in its nicely dedicated tray in the corner over there. You got your two D20s over there. You got your miniatures that were already in the box over there for the orbs and the prisoners and these treasures. Then all the, the tokens that aren't bosses uh, go in here. So I have orbs and prisoners and all kinds of stuff over here. There's uh, plus 70 tokens in there as well. Uh, and there's a, a, um, a sand timer and an XP token in here as well. So those all go there and they fit nicely. Uh, I have two of these rings left, which I just put here according to the Kickstarter update that said just put them there. Then you can take uh, these two uh, double um, tokens, these, these lava and traps, and they just go in here as well. You can just put them over there. And then you take the uh, three by one tiles and you put them on top like so and they all have these uh, slots that were made specifically for them so you can do this and just grab them so that works really nice then you take the three by three tiles and you put them on top of that and they also have plenty of ways to grab them and then you have these two by four tiles and they go on top of that and they also come out very easily Next, we fill in this tray and starting with the 2x2 two two tiles with the rubble and the uh, spores or the green stuff on the other side. So they go in the bottom like that. Then you take the 2x4s of that uh, color of those uh, the rubble and you put them on top of that and they also come out easily as you can see. Which leaves me with uh, four of these 2x2 two two, and you simply put them on top of that. So that all fits nicely into those slots. So then we take these wall tokens. So these are the two by ones. They go on the bottom all the way there. You can take them out with this uh, indentation over here. Then there's a spot for the three by ones on top of that. And again, you can just flip them up like that. And then there's a spot for the five by one tiles on that one which leaves me with a whole lot of four by ones and they all go in here in this one tray and they can also be just flipped up like that. So that works really nicely. Then we have these small tiles. We have these, uh, these runes and they go in here. There's four of them and they go in here and that sits nicely and flush. And again, you can grab them very easily. Then we have these two uh, staircases that go on top. Then I have two of these lever tokens that go in the bottom over here. 
and on top you can put all of these uh, different uh, portal tiles and they simply go on top there. Then we have these door tiles, so all the single doors, they go in here like this and the double doors go on top of that and also you can grab them very easily. So this tray works perfectly for all these tiles. And then there's four slots for cards. Now if you didn't sleeve them, they will fit into the top trays. But if you did sleeve them, then uh, I've put all of these adventure cards over here. There's 60 of them. I made two stacks of 30 and sleeved and they fit very well. And I also put the uh, fate cards in here and the boss spell cards as well. And these are just small decks. I could put them on top and have room for uh, expansion cards, but I just put them here to show them to you. Next up is the first tray that goes on top of the bottom tray, and that is the villain tray. So what I did was, I followed the instructions again, uh, I put the level up cards, the flask cards, evil power cards, villains, and the boss abilities here uh, in these five slots. So all the cards that belong to the villains and the bosses basically go in here. The miniatures go where they were, of course. You have the big bad guy over here, and the other ones, they all fit in these slots. And I gave them base rings in the same colors as these tokens, and these are all the villain tokens. So basically, if you had one of these villains with a red ring, that's this guy, I gave him a red ring on his base as well. Uh, notice, though, that the orange tokens, they have yellow rings. So that's uh, a color that doesn't quite match. But the others do match. You have this uh, minty green and you have blue and gray, etc. So only this guy does not have a ring because his token is also just gray. So those go in here and then you can put the lid on top and just put that on top of this tray. Be careful with the dragon's wing. So that goes in there. Oh, and I almost forgot to put in these uh, tiles, these cards. So these are all the uh, boss cards here and these two reference cards. And I simply put them on top of these cards. There is a dedicated slot for that as well. So that fits in here. All right, just like that. And then you put on, did I do that correctly? Yes, right. There's just just enough to, to fit in here. So it's uh, it's a bit uh, tight, but the lid will keep them in place. All right, on to the next lid. This tray here, I'll take the lid off. There we go. So this tray also has um, these player cards. So you have all these wonderfully illustrated cards for all the heroes, and they go on top. They're in the same slot. And all the heroes have their own dedicated spots, like they came in the box. And you have these icons to uh, represent their class. So each two of that class go here. So that makes it easier uh, to uh, remember where to put them. I put the heroic action cards and the artifact cards on top of each other here. I have scroll cards here. I have these two tokens, I just put them on top of some of the cards, and these are all the hero abilities. So I just made two stacks of those, and kind of just divided them, and put those tokens on top. So those are all the sleeved cards for the heroes, and then you take all these cards and simply put that on top as well. And that's basically it, you put on the lid once more, and that goes on top of the previous one in the box. And again, you need to just take the wing out of the way for a bit there. So then you have these uh, manuals, so the three uh, books and this quick start guide, and those simply go on top along with the board. And that's it. That is all the stuff that goes into this box and how you arrange it. So that was the reboxing. And so that was my unboxing of the core game of Arena the Contest by Dragori Games 
Also keep an eye on my channel for unboxings of the Heroes and Dungeons box, the Kickstarter exclusives, the Giant Dragon, the Hydra, and other stuff that I got with this game. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.